Hey everyone, it's Sarah with RegisterNurseRN.com and in this video I'm going to be going over kidney and nephron anatomy. This video will start our NCLEX review series over the renal system. And at the end of this video, don't forget to access the free quiz. So let's get started. First, let's start out talking about the kidneys. Okay, you have two kidneys. You have a right kidney and a left kidney. And your right kidney sets a little bit lower than the left kidney. And the reason for this is because above the right kidney is the liver. And to help accommodate the size of the liver, that kidney has to be just a little bit down when you compare it to the left one. Now, what do our kidneys do? They are very, very important in our survival. Just like with the heart, we've learned that the heart will take our blood and pump that fresh oxygenated blood that it received through the lungs, throughout the body. Well, the kidneys receive that fresh blood through the renal artery. And it will take that blood and it will filter that. And after it filters, it takes what it needs. It will send it back through the renal vein. So inside the kidneys, you have filtration, absorption and secretion and excretion going on. And what will happen is that the kidneys will produce filtrate, which is a liquid that will turn into urine. It will go down through your ureters. You have one, you have two that connect to each kidney. Then it will go down into the bladder to be stored. And as the bladder becomes full, you will feel the urge to void and then it will exit through the urethra. Now let's look at the inside of the kidney. If you took a kidney, which um, look is like a little bean shape, if you've ever seen kidney beans, they look like that, but they're a lot bigger, and you took it and you just cut it in half, this is what it would look like on the inside. So let's cover the basic anatomy of the kidney. Okay, around the kidney is this outer, capsule and it's called the renal capsule and this capsule what it does is that it gives the kidney its shape but it also helps protect the kidney from any infection that may be present in other organs because we don't want our kidneys to become infected if they become infected we can die now inside the kidney this is what we are interested in because this is where things get done this is where our urine is going to be created so you have this outer part of this layer this is called the renal cortex then you have this little inner layer and this is called the renal medulla and please note where these layers are because it's going to be really important when we're talking about the nephron because certain parts of the nephron are in the cortex versus the medulla and it all makes sense in the next video when we talk about the nephron physiology okay so we have that structure and then inside where the medulla is we have these areas and i think they look like little seashells they're called renal pyramids and they have these striped areas why do they have these striped areas well inside the renal pyramid you have part of the nephron and the nephron is running straight parallel in these pyramids and it gives us this striped look to it then if you took away your renal artery and your renal vein and you looked behind it we would have this area right here. And this is where the urine is really draining down through the ureters into the bladder. This is where once it's created in this area up in here, it will drain down through these areas. So let's go over these areas. Again, you have your renal pyramids. You have your renal papilla, which um, is the tip of the point of the pyramid. Then when your urine comes down through the renal papilla, it will go into the calyxes and you have the minor calyx and you have the major calyx. Then the urine will progress down through the renal pelvis, which will go down into your ureter, then into the bladder and then the urethra. Now, um, in between your renal pyramids are renal columns and the renal columns contain a network of where your renal artery and your renal vein branch off into these um, capillaries and um, arterioles. Now, let's look at the nephron. Okay, 
if you're going to remember anything about the kidney, the nephron is what you need to remember because this is the functional part of the kidney that um, allows it to filter, reabsorb, and secrete um, waste and things we don't need and turns it into urine. And each kidney contains millions of these little nephrons and they run in this area right here. So let's dissect a nephron. So here is a basic structure of a nephron. And if you took a nephron and just stretched it out, it would allow you to see these different parts. But in reality, because you have millions of these just throughout here, if you look at them, they're all like twisted and they look convoluted and everything and they're all squeezed together. And it would be really hard to tell what's what. So, um, with the nephron, let's talk about this. You have two, I like to think of it as two different sections. You have the section, which is known as the renal corpuscle, that is responsible for filtration. And it is the Bowman's capsule and the glomerulus. This is where filtration happens. Your blood's being filtered, um, things that are being pulled out or like water, ions, and waste. And then you have the second section called the renal tubule. And then it's this section, and this is where reabsorption and secretion are happening. What's happening is that you have this filtrate that's been created by the renal corpuscle, and you have these substances and water that's constantly flowing in and out of these tubules back into circulation, which would be reabsorption, or um, it's moving out of circulation into the tubules, which is called secretion. So let's break this nephron down. Okay, so going to the nephron, remember um, we just received fresh blood from our heart. It's nice and oxygenated, but it needs to be filtered. So um, your renal artery breaks off and it'll break off into what's called the afferent arterial. And this is going to the first part of the nephron, the glomerulus. Afferent means towards something. So it hits the glomerulus. And the glomerulus is this really unique structure. If you ever look at a nephron, look for the red part with all these squiggled up capillary looking areas, and that's your glomerulus. And so that's what it is. It's a bunch of capillaries just twisted in this circular um, shape. And because of that, the way it's formed, um, as that blood flows through there, it creates this ultra filtration process which allows that blood as it's in a sense spinning through there to be filtered and to um, release what's called filtrate down into this collection capsule called Bowman's capsule. So you have this filtrate coming out of there and this filtrate will include like water, um, your electrolytes like potassium, chloride, sodium, magnesium, calcium, phosphate, and waste like urea and creatinine. And it collects in there and it's called filtrate. Then um, your glomerulus will go after the blood has filtered through there and it'll branch off into what's called the efferent arterial. Efferent means away, so it's leaving the glomerulus. And then the efferent arterial goes, just doesn't stop, it still has a very important job to do. It goes down and starts forming and twisting around those tubules and hanging out around there because it has a very important job as well. The, what it forms is called peritubial capillaries and um, these are up here on these ducts and then when they go down and they form down where the loop of Henle is, it's called the vas directa which is a type of peritubial capillary. Now, what do these capillaries do? Okay, so we have this filtrate going down through these tubules. And remember what I said, the renal tubules are responsible mainly for reabsorption and secretion. So um, in order for things to be reabsorbed and secreted so you can get rid of it, you need something to help with that process. So that's where those peritubial capillaries come into play. So let's talk about these two terms because um, in order to understand the physiology of the nephron, which we're gonna talk about in the next video in depth, you have to really understand these two terms, reabsorption and secretion. So reabsorption. Okay, number one, we call it reabsorption. Why not absorption? Well, because we've already absorbed these substances. That's how they've got in our blood. Because remember, it's went through the hearts, came here, been filtered, and we got it. 
where did we already absorb most of this nutrients at? When we ate food through our GI tract, because we eat, your small intestine does most of the absorption, so those specialized cells in there took the glucose, the amino acids, the potassium, the calcium, the sodium, and took it and transported it where it needed to go and put it in the bloodstream. And the heart now pumps it out and says, kidneys, do your job, you filter this out, choose what the body needs because the body likes homeostasis. It likes a balance of water, balance of electrolytes, and a nice balance of waste, specifically urea and creatinine. So as this filtrate has all of this nutrients in it, it needs to be reabsorbed. So that's what's gonna happen. It's gonna flow through here and based on where it's at in these tubules, cause certain tubules absorb more here and more there, it will be reabsorbed cause we've already absorbed it once. So it'll be reabsorbed and will flow through those paratubule capillaries, which will eventually go to the renal vein, which will eventually go back to the heart, but it'll get reoxygenated and the beautiful cycle will just keep going and going. Now let's talk about secretion. Okay, secretion, the paratubule capillaries help in that because um, these capillaries will carry like any um, waste, like urea, creatinine, um, or any drugs you've taken, like antibiotics, diuretics, and will secrete their substances into the filtrate. Um, and it will be taken and transported out and excreted as urine. So that's how those two go hand in hand. Okay, now back to the nephron. Okay, so all that filtrate is there in Bowman's capsule. It's ready to go down in through these tubules to be reabsorbed or secreted. So filtrate goes down. The first part it hits is called the proximal convoluted tubule. And um, this area is where a lot, where actually most of your reabsorption is going to occur. Like, um, pretty much all of your glucose, your amino acids, um, a lot of sodium and chloride and things like that. Things that are essential that your body really needs right away. Then the filtrate is going to travel down into the loop of Henle. And this is really one of the most important parts and interesting parts of the nephron. And remember what I said about these cortexes and the medulla. The loop of Henle has a descending limb and an ascending limb. And they really each do their own different things. And they're located, the loop of Henle is mainly located in your renal medulla. And the renal medulla is a very, very salty area. It's um, hypertonic. The interstitial fluid that is in the renal medulla is hypertonic. And this is very important because this area is where most of your water absorption is going to occur. And this is where your urine is really going to get concentrated. Then it's going, the filtrate is going to go up through the distal convoluted tubule where some more absorption, a little bit of secretion is going to occur. Then it's going to go down through your collecting ducts where everything's just going to be brushed up. The last part of secretion and reabsorption is going to occur. Then it's ready to exit the body. It's going to go down through the renal papilla, which eventually will go into your calyx, your minor and major calyx through your renal pelvis, down through your ureters, into the bladder, and into the urethra. So that is how urine is made, through your nephron. Now don't forget to check out the next video about nephron physiology. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to take the free quiz and to subscribe to our channel for more videos.